welcome to our 10th episode of Logi Talk. I am Gabriella Day and I'm your host. March is Women's History Month in the United States and at the same time within this month, we all celebrate International Women's Day around the world. The theme of this year's international celebration was break the bias. The hashtag was encouragement for all of us to not just imagine a gender equitable world, but to know that we can all collectively create that world together by freeing women of biases, stereotypes, and discrimination that hold them back every day. I couldn't think of a better guest that embodies Break the Bias than my guest today, Aisha Bowie. She is part of our Women Who Master series here at Logitech and is also a former NASA rocket scientist and the founder and CEO of STEM Board, an engineering consulting firm and the creator of Lingo, a, product base, a project-based STEM coding kit that is used by thousands of students and now available on major retailers. Aisha also starred in a new Apple TV Plus short documentary titled In Her Element, in which she shares pieces of her life story that start with doubt and continue to define what it means to believe in yourself and then extend that faith to others. I feel really lucky that we get to dive even deeper into her journey with her here today. Hi, Aisha. Hey, hi, Gabby. I'm so happy to have you. Welcome to Logi Talk. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm I'm good. I'm excited to be here with you. I'm a big fan of breaking barriers. And it's not just barriers in life. It's barriers in yourself. I found myself at community college without any goals, without any dreams. And Gabby, I felt bad. I felt every day. I can remember not liking when people would even look at me because Mm. I just felt so painfully shy and insecure. And one day I sat down and I said, you know what? I don't want to feel bad anymore. So I'm going to pretend to feel good. And if I'm going to pretend to feel good, I'm just going to make up a list of these things that I hope to achieve in the future. And I honestly thought maybe just for a moment, I was a little bit crazy, but I did it. I took out a piece of paper and I said, hey, um, if I could feel good and if I could really believe in myself, what would I do? And the first thing that I would do would be I would graduate from college and not just any college, the University of Michigan, because that's the leaders and best. That was what I could see in my hometown as like the bar. And if I'm going to go to Michigan, then I'm going to study engineering. And if I'm going to study engineering... A for aerospace, because that's at the top of the list. <laughs> and it was harder than nuclear, which, you know, also had the whole idea of like living on a submarine, which uh, I was not, I was not vibing with living on a nuclear submarine. That was not my thing. Not my thing. I don't know if my hair can do underwater very well. So I'm just... <laughs> I'm like, my I'm like, I don't even like to get wet in the rain. So we're not doing, we're not life. And so it was aerospace. And I, I said to myself, I Really, really nuts. Like, we're going to believe and uh, let's see if this works out. And right. it did. Every single one of those things, they came. And I hear what I hear you saying is that you really envisioned yourself in the place you wanted to be instead of letting the visions of others create your life for you, which I think is a really common theme amongst people that are breaking barriers and are breaking the bias. They really never let anyone else paint the picture for them. Um, So that is fascinating. And you talk now about that in past tense. Let's let's forward a little bit in your journey and go to when you arrived at NASA um, and talking about breaking barriers there, being a woman in that space, being a black woman in that space, um, being a beautiful woman in that space. If anyone's listening, Aisha's stunning. Um, it's hard to stop looking at her. And you're also just in awe of how much her, her achievements supersede her beauty. So when you walked into NASA, you started spending time there. What were some of the barriers and stereotypes that you found were present that you had to overcome even after stepping foot in the door? Well, my favorite had to do with speaking in front of middle school and elementary school children. 
See, I used to be afraid to speak publicly in front of audiences and I'd have to get up and give these technical presentations, right? And I was just sweating. I mean, I was like dripping in sweat. I was so nervous and I was scared that I used to practice in my shower. I don't know if anybody does that. I'd practice in the shower, in the car, everything that I could think I would practice. And so I decided to go on these speaking engagements with middle school and elementary school students to polish my craft, right? I mean, if you can keep an elementary school student's attention, you got something. You, you got can keep something. It. Hands down. That's the way to go. And I would go in front of these kids and their teachers were like, this is Miss Aisha from Nessa Ames and she's an aerospace engineer with a master's in space systems engineering and the kids would look at me like I had like 16 heads <laughs> like wait wait what I used to no kidding my degrees in the trunk of my car this is pre every student having an iPhone oh wow kids mentally could not process that I was an engineer and what we as a society define very early on what can and cannot be. And mm -hmm. while there were certain things that I would like to tackle at work, I first had to tackle normalizing who was in the field who was around me. Because if right. I could not get middle school and elementary schools to accept my existence, how could I expect adults to? Well, yeah, it's it's almost touching on this universal theme and correct me if I'm wrong of imposter syndrome that we all get as people that are breaking down barriers. We we're in these spaces. We've done the work to be there. But then there's this incredible gnawing at why we are there and also if people believe that we are actually present in that space and have worked hard to be there. So I completely identify with you keeping your degrees in the back of your car. Um, I think I wanted to do that a couple times when questioned. <laughs> Um, but I, I think most people can identify with that. And so how did you push back on that unconscious bias? And was yeah. maybe creating STEM board a part of that? Because now you talk to kids all the time. I remember we were having a one on one and you were headed to go talk to children. So either you've learned how to manage the sweat or you've mastered the ability. So this is what I love. There were a couple of things that were really important to me and some of which who's ever listening to our conversation can do right now. The first is I myself as part of the solution as opposed to being by just the problem. And so I said, okay, Aisha, if you cannot be what you cannot define, I'm going to define it for them. No matter, even if I didn't see myself as a role model, I was going to step into those shoes and I was going to try to be one. And like a role model, and I became one. The second thing is I was surrounded by leadership that understood that the problems that we have today require a diversity of thought just gender and ethnicity, but we're looking at really challenging problems and we need everybody. And so my leadership, some of whom would be considered traditional, very traditional, I mean, it's, you know, it's NASA, will be a point to come down and empower me. And that's what I love about companies like Logitech. You guys have leadership that is, hey, we're going to be at the forefront, right? We're going to make sure that we have campaigns and that we put our dollars behind elevating voices like mine, the community, so that people get a different perspective. And so it wasn't just me deciding to be a role model. It was my leadership saying, you know what, Aisha, she's different, but we're going to empower her. We're going to get and we're going to set the expectation for respect so that her ideas can be heard. I want you to explain to everybody how you even started STEM board and the circumstances in which you started it under, because a lot of people don't know that part of your story. And hint, hint, it has to do with investment capitalism. And only 2% of women get that. Aisha did something beyond incredible past that stat. I don't like being told no. And I also <laughs> wanted to, <laughs> I mean, I wanted to push the limitations of what I thought 
was true. If there's one thing I want people to take out of listening to me today, what you think you know may not actually be. I mm. thought there was no way I could go to a four-year institution and become a NASA rocket scientist. Oops, did that. I thought there was no way that I could run a company. I now run two. And with STEM board, I wanted to find a way to educate, uplift, and inspire while working on tech projects. And everyone was like, well, you don't come from a wealthy family who aren't exactly venture backable, or so we think, wink, wink, nod, nod. And I don't really think that you're going to be able to do this. And I just, I tried to raise capital and it didn't go well. And Gabby, I was like, why does this have to be the way that it is done? Right. And so I determined that I was going to make myself into the owner of a seven, soon to be eight figure business. And I was going to demonstrate that it could be done differently. And so I started by selling engineering services to people who knew of my reputation as an engineer. Mm -hmm. And eventually over time, I was able to get another contract. And now I've owned the company for nine years. We have employees, five U.S. states. And are a leading engineering provider for some of the world's most inst elite institutions. And it's wow. simply because I believed that we could do it in the same way that I believe employees are more than what I hire them for. They are whole people and I want them to come and bring their gifts, whether it's photography or graphic design or um, engineering content development for kids. And listen, let me leave you with this one story. And, and I can't just, I can't leave the podcast without this one. So okay. <laughs> and he is an amazing data analyst. He has four children. And during the pandemic, he said, I think I want to, I think I want to record content for lingo. And I was like, I don't know. I mean, ooh, I don't know presentations and like technically they're great but I, you know it's not like it's not like watching Oprah I'm not sure I'm just not sure <laughs> and he created the most amazing content and I can remember getting a note from his wife and she said Aisha I never thought I could love my husband more until you started letting him bring himself to work. We have four kids and I did not know that he liked to make educational content and now Cord. He takes the content to church. He tries it out on our dog and anybody that will listen. And our lives are better because of it. Oh my goodness. Advancing careers, healing relationships, giving people new talent. <laughs> I think you are Oprah with all of those, just with that story alone. Um, she's the only other woman who I know could do that many things with just giving someone a chance. That is remarkable. And I think it speaks to exactly what you're talking about, using your skills beyond what people think they can do. Um, a skill set is not just one tract, it's multifaceted. And so it's really amazing to hear that you've implored that and it's tangibly, it's worked tangibly. The next thing that I wanted to really talk about, including STEM board, it's Women's History Month. Um, we had International Women's Day. But what do you think STEM board can combat when it comes to gender inequality? Is that something that you're looking at? Do you feel like that's something it can do? Are you hopeful for that in the future? What are your thoughts? I've been on the floor working with amazing partners in order to do that. And one of the things that I recognize is that gender equality is a global problem. And I have the privilege of working with the State Department through a series of lectures on engineering and entrepreneurship and gender. How we as a global community can learn the tools and techniques in order to break the bias. And one of the examples of that is uh, the recent film, the documentary on women in technology, because part of it is showing people examples of what does this look like? What does it look to show up and be a woman in technology? What does it look like to do work that can potentially 
other girls see themselves in the same space. Mm -hmm. And I love that about the now. I love that people can go online and they can see you and I talking about these subjects. Miss Wisconsin also has a chemistry degree. Yeah. <laughs> For a tech company. She's gorgeous. And she's talking to another gorgeous CEO of a seven plus million dollar company that is made like if that's not moving the needle, I don't know what is. Yeah, yeah. Seeing is believing. I've always I've always understood that. Um, and to your point, it's not until recently that we've started seeing a lot more and seeing it in these exciting new ways like this podcast or videos on YouTube or on Instagram. It's it's almost like being exposed to your dreams in real time and seeing that you could be there in a matter of time just by just by understanding and believing what you're actually watching and so i i completely agree with that i completely agree with that so i'm excited to see what stem board does and see how they continue to close that gender gap just by giving people opportunities to participate i i know we talked about this and touched on it a lot earlier in the conversation but from a bird's eye view i think we both know that mentoring is incredibly important because you've spoken about it and it's obviously had a very very real impact on your life but what are some key reasons that you think people should know and hear especially from you as to why mentoring is so important from somebody who has developed an enormous amount of success from it and I know that successful is self-made. And at every inflection point in my career, I had mentors who understood their personal power, who were willing to put themselves out there for me to make sure advance. When I started working at NASA, the director of engineering sat me down one day and said, hey, Aisha, I think you're going to hope that the person who's evaluating year remembers all your accomplishments, but maybe you should keep a spreadsheet and track what you do every day. And maybe you should align it to the agency objectives. And maybe we should check in on that every single month. And just that small bit of mentorship allowed me to ensure that my accomplishments and my contributions to the mission were always fairly evaluated during every performance review. Yeah. And so to apply for rotational programs, I was able to elevate my career because he thought I should know that. And while I would love to tell you that I came out of community college and university ready to take on the world, I have mentors right now that are saying, hey, here are things that you didn't think about. And because of them, I do what I do. There's something about mentorship that is infectious. It's that whatever you put out, you will get back in spades. And sometimes leading is also understanding how to support people by following them. Mm -hmm.